Joining me now from Highlands Ranch, Colorado, former Republican state senator and chairman of the Committee to Defend the President PAC, Ted Harvey. Ted, it seems to me too many times after incidents like uh, what we saw in El Paso and Dayton that Republicans um, tend to become wallflowers or shrinking violets. And they don't come out and, and, and get in the affirmative and say, yes, this is a horrible tragedy, but no, we cannot punish the American people and attack the United States Constitution as a solution. Well, you're exactly right. Um, I'm, I'm pretty tired of, of politicians in general, but specifically Republicans who run as Second Amendment advocates coming out and espousing, taking away our constitutional rights to be able to defend ourselves every time that there is a shooting. And we don't do that, um, you know, when there's car accidents. We don't do that when um, you know, there's plane accidents. All of a sudden, now that there are huge um, numbers of people being killed on the same weekend, now you have Republicans getting in line and saying we should do red flag laws. We have that in here in Colorado, where um, we had a tragic incident, and the Democrats used that to their benefit to pass the red flaw red flag law here in Colorado. And unfortunately, my sheriff here in one of the most conservative counties in Colorado supported it. And it's, mm. it's disappointing to see those people who are supposed to be defending our Constitution um, fighting to take it away. I want to deviate just a little bit. But first, I'm going to say something really radical that I think more Republicans ought to consider saying, and that is more guns equals less crime. We can go into why that's axiomatic and true some other time. But I want to make this turn and, and look at the eyes of Texas being upon El Paso, yes, but the eyes of Texas are also upon a trend right now. I don't know what else to call it, Ted. Um, these uh, four Texas congressmen stepping down, Kenny Marchant, Will Hurd, Pete Olson, and Mike Conaway. Is there a common theme? What's, uh, what's going on in the great state of Texas with these gentlemen? I don't know. I'd like to know. that. I think the Democrats have a target on Texas to turn it blue. And if Texas goes blue, it's going to be very hard for any Republican presidential candidate to win moving forward. The Republicans have to be doubling down in Texas and doing everything they can to deal with the illegal immigration influx, deal with um, ID laws so that people aren't voting that shouldn't be voting. And um, if we don't start getting a hand on, on illegal voting in Texas, we're going to lose that state and we'll lose the country. And so we need, uh, you need good Republican candidates uh, stepping forward in Texas, solid ones, solid conservatives. So constitutional. Constitutional type uh, stepping forward in Texas to fill this, this void. Will Hurd, uh, you know, is a, is a well-known critic of the President of the United States. And whether Will Hurd likes it or not, Donald Trump is the de facto leader of the Republican Party. But there are typical Democrat responses out there to the shooting uh, that, uh, that these people are putting on social media, like this guy, uh, Scott Pelosi Peters. He says this, Ted, Donald Trump blamed video games and mental health laws, but said nothing of his own divisive rhetoric. If he truly condemns racism, bigotry, and white supremacy, he ought to look at his role in perpetuating it. I would say, as a response to that, it is this guy, Scott Pelosi Peters, who is offering the divisive rhetoric. He's the bigot, calling the president of the United States a white supremacist. And oh, by the way, I'd point out that his record is among the worst on Capitol Hill. He's got a terrible record on the environment, terrible record in protecting gun rights, a terrible record on the budget. This is what candidates need to do. Well, I think that's typical rhetoric of anybody on the left. Whenever there's a tragedy like this, they try to blame it on the Republicans. But I, where were they when the Fort Hood shooting happened in 2009? Where right. were they? You know, I can list off probably 10 mass shootings that happened during the Obama years. And where were all these radical leftists pointing the fingers at President Obama for, for those tragedies? Exactly. It's not, it's not the president's fault. It is the person who was shooting the gun's fault. It was not the gun's fault. It was the person shooting the gun's fault. And the, the Democrats need to, to understand that denying people their constitutional and alienable right of self-defense is not the answer to solving this violence. I would argue much of this is dealing with a moral issue and, and the uh, breakdown of the fabric of our country. Like that, likewise, I would hope that your PAC remembers these uh, wallflowers and these shrieking violets that are not coming to the defense of the President of the United States and that are not coming to the defense of the United States Constitution. Ted, thank you.
Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.